What's up everybody, it's your boy. Today on the Tube Plumber, I'm gonna teach you how to replace, well not replace, rebuild this long guy. So this is a 0.5 gallon for a urinal. I'll show you what's going on here. Basically, the diaphragm is there. The urinal just keeps running, running, and running. I'm going to teach you how to rebuild it, remove it, and do a full rebuild using a rebuild kit. I'll show you what, what, what we do. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is make sure the water is off, which it is. That's how you shut the water off right there on the screwdriver. Turn it off, okay? And what I do is I come up here and we break this free. Ooh, see all that movement? No. You just you gotta hook hook your eyes in there and just get over here and look. Damn thing's moving. So uh, I'll have a tripod to set this camera up. Uh, Alright, hang on. Okay, so basically I just put my hand behind here, pull out on it. Put the wrench on here and turn it. Okay, so now that that's free, we're gonna come down here. And we're just gonna just crack that with just a scotch. Then we come over here to this one. Oh dang! And crack that one. Okay, once they're all free, get that one off. This one off, this one's a little tight because of the gasket. Just pull down until it falls, okay? It's got water in it, in the body, of course. So we'll just jiggle and wiggle until it comes out, okay? Okay, once you got it out and you're ready to start rebuilding it, you can come over here. We're gonna take this out. This is called your vacuum breaker. So we're gonna take that out so that it's empty like that. So, take off your cap. This is the diaphragm. You wanna keep this. This stays. This goes inside that. That's your diaphragm. That's how you know it's bad. See all the deteriorated rubber all over me. Plus, it just looks heated up. It looks like it's been run harder than forest down across the states. Alright, then. See this o ring right here? You're gonna take that off. Inside your kit, you'll have another o ring. It goes right there. Don't forget to put a little bit of grease on there. Alright. I'm going to take this. I forgot to crack this one free. That's alright. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Look, this half some patience. Okay, take that out. Don't forget this, when you put it back on, this doesn't go in between here, it goes on the front. Okay. This handle looks brand new, but we're going to replace it anyways because we're here. Okay, it just pops out like that. Your new one just goes right up in there, spring towards the handle. And that spring and handle is what pushes this in and out. And that pushes on the bottom of the diaphragm, like that, right? And it causes the top here to open just a scotch to allow that water to go through there and, and make it flush. Alright. 
okay. And then we got our new ring. Remember, it goes on the outside of the flesh piece. So it's gonna sit like that. And you're just gonna plug it back in there. And just go hand tight for now. Okay. Now this one is a big one. I see a lot of people get this wrong. White piece goes inside the lip. See the lip? Okay. So the white piece gets seated inside the rubber lip. Okay? And then you have your little tiny crush gasket that goes on the top. And you're basically, you're just gonna set this down just like that. So now, when you're ready, you're gonna take your new diaphragm, make sure this is in it, right here. Make sure that goes right in the center. Drop it in there, make sure it's seated. your black cap that I told you not to lose, put it back on the top, take the Sloan valve cap and screw it back on hand tight, just like that. So we got our o-ring, we got our diaphragm, the vacuum breakers up there, take all this crap and throw it away, bring it back up here, this just sits loose, so don't mess up the gasket. Okay, what I do is I just set it on there and just wiggle and just wiggle and just wiggle because you want that o-ring to go up inside there. This metal thing right here, that's a that's like a lock sleeve that pinches sideways so that this won't come out. So anyways, you see how that's loose? You want that to be loose. This thing will have a little bit of play in it. So we're just going to line it up, bring our nut back up here. Hard to do one-handed. Okay, don't forget, that's loose. This is, that's hand tight, that's hand tight, that's hand tight. We'll bring this guy over here. And tight. Break out old trusty. Old trusty bucket. You don't have to go wild with this because it's all gasketed together anyways. But you definitely want to make sure it's tight. down all the way. I'm going to put the camera down so that I can get two hands on there because remember it wiggles and we don't like wiggle. I break something with wiggle. So let me get back to you real quick. Alright once you got everything back together fire this thing back up. Just, we'll go full cord all the way. and it'll prime itself and stop. See that? You don't have to meter the water with this as long as your diaphragm is proper. If your diaphragm is wrong, you'll have to meter this to slow down the water because the diaphragm will be either allowing not enough or too much. If it's the right diaphragm, this can go all the way open. And you try that to flush properly. Kick ass. All right. Thanks everybody for watching another beautiful day at the tube plumber. I hope you learned something. Stay out there, turn wrenches, keep plumbing, keep kicking ass.